Alyssa Smith was his number one concern defensively. Smith is coming off the best rebounding performance of her career against TCU with 16 corrals. And we're also expecting her to have a lot of defensive responsibility on Ashley Jones. Yes, Ashley Jones will draw a lot of attention as well. She should, the junior from Iowa City, leading the Big 12 and scoring eighth in the country at 24 and a half points per game. So here we go. You see Iowa State wearing white. The Bears in gold, and we are underway at Hilton Coliseum. Dee Dee Richards, number two, with the ball in her hands. A terrific story in her own right with Baylor coming back from a preseason injury that left her partially paralyzed. And right away, they attack the paint, and Richards scores. Iowa State starting out in a sagging man-to-man. -man. Notice the double team right away because of the concern with the offense of Nalissa Smith. You take a look at the Iowa State starting five. Very unusual. Three of their five starters are true freshmen, but they're going to go to the to the moneymaker right away, the junior Ashley Jones with the bucket. And for Baylor, they're starting five. Dee Dee Richards, uh, Melissa Smith that LaChina talked about. Queen Egbo gives them good size. But what about Moon Urson? Here's someone who in the first three years of her collegiate career didn't get a lot of playing time, and she has absolutely flourished now as a senior starter. Yeah, she's playing very good basketball. Her last five games, she's averaging 18 points, eight rebounds, four assists. And in that last meeting between these two teams, there was some foul trouble in the first half. And Moon was someone who was limited in her impact, along with Queen Egbo, who is at the free throw line. So they want to get Queen going because she has the tendency to get in some foul trouble and they need her size against Iowa State. Yeah, Egbo at 6-3. That foul was on Emily Ryan. One of the three freshmen who start for Iowa State, the only Power 5 school that has had three freshmen start in every single game this season. One big change defensively for Baylor as well. They will not switch in their man-to-man. -man. One thing Iowa State did well is they took advantage of the mismatches, bringing bigs to the outside, and Ashley Jones was able to post up Baylor's guard. So they will not switch in their man today. After the turnover, Several efforts by Melissa Smith, and finally, the perseverance pays off. She is a monster on the glass, and it's not often that she misses that many buckets around the cup. She is one of the most efficient offensive players in the country. That's right. She is hitting 50% of her shots. Moon Urson gets the rebound quickly up to Richards, who has been an assist machine lately for Baylor. And then the, the follow by Smith draws another Cyclone foul. There's just energy on energy. When you mention the name Melissa Smith on the glass, I mean, multiple looks and credit Iowa State. They stuck with it. But what they did not do was get to the body of Smith. You have to push her off the glass because she is just too athletic. And with that wingspan, she gets right to the basketball. And you see all the accolades for Melissa Smith, who was fouled by Kylie Feuerbach. And Smith, like Urson, one of the upperclassmen that are really leading this Lady Bear team, delivering at the free throw line for Melissa Smith, who, uh, as you mentioned, one of, the, one of the best rebounders in the country. In fact, had a double-double with three blocks when these two teams played a couple of weeks ago in Waco. Another empty trip for Iowa State, pardon me. Looking to get isolation for Jones on the low block. And that's Ashley Jones, because keep in mind, her sister's on the team, too. <laughs> that is right, Aubrey, her uh, freshman little sister. There's Kim Mulkey, needs no introduction, does she? Now in her, her third decade of coaching the Lady Bears, has a championship, three of them, in fact, and very much looking forward to this game. In fact, they, they, they swapped around their practice schedule so they could get four practices in a row before heading out to Ames for this rematch. There's a foul on the drive by Feuerbach. Really nice drive by Feuerbach. And this is where I think Iowa State doesn't get the credit they deserve. They are a very good three-point shooting team. They hit about 10 three-pointers per game, one of the best in the nation. But they are solid off of the drive, and that's what sets up the three. When they get the floor spread, they will look to take you one-on-one -on -one to the bucket. Feuerbach 
who's only shooting 55% from the free throw line on the season, hits both of, them at, both of them as a team. Iowa State is one of the best teams in the country from the line. In fact, fourth best at over 81% as a team. Rebound could not be handled by Feuerbach, but then it is thrown out of bounds. The Cyclones get it back. Yeah, Queen Egbo has struggled with some turnovers. In fact, Baylor is led in turnovers by their post players. She and Alyssa Smith. Something to keep an eye on for the post players, sometimes struggling to pass out of double teams. There is Ashley Jones, number 24 in white. Dee Dee Richards draws the defensive assignment, and Jones goes right after her. Taking on the National Defensive Player of the Year, reigning National Defensive Player of the Year. And you see Baylor is switching up who they're guarding Jones with, and we expected to see that. They're going to use the length of Smith use the quickness and tenacity of Dee Dee Richards. We may see some doubling on Jones, a great respect from this Baylor program for what Ashley Jones does between the lines. Jones gets them both. Ashley Jones a couple of weeks ago after the win against Baylor was the national player of the week, the national player of the week. Also, they beat Oklahoma State in those two games. Ashley had 57 points and 27 rebounds. And and really is a terrific player that maybe a lot of people across the country don't know all that much about, but should know all about Ashley. I mean, she's a great player. Uh, one thing I like that Bill Finley told us is that the quote in his mind when he thinks about Jones is never let him see you sweat. She doesn't panic. She's always very poised, plays under control. She reminds me a lot of Penny Taylor. Uh, the WNBA great from Australia just has an inside outside game, but her toughness and her ability to score around the rim even against size, really is what makes her special. And a development for Iowa State, that last foul that sent Trini Oliver to the line was on Emily Ryan, and their point guard has two personals, so she's been replaced by number four in white, Ray Johnson. And Ray Johnson was the go-to point guard, Pam, to your point, last season for Iowa State. So she has experience running that point, but a little bit differently than the way that Emily Ryan runs it as a freshman. And Ray is a senior from Albertville, Minnesota. See the double quickly, but passed out of it. Oliver could not hit, but a second chance for one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Baylor out rebounding their opponents by 19 and a half boards per game on average, which is unbelievable. And more contact. And turnover gives it over to the Cyclones. Yeah, it looks like they called a charge there on Egbo looking to take on Jones, who was kind of already falling by the time the contact got there, but uh, just a savvy play because Queen can be very foul prone. I like calling her Queen instead of Egbo, you know, and you just got to <laughs> get Queen out there every time yeah. you can. I would yeah, normally Baylor. call her by last name. No disrespect. <laughs> no, not at all. And there's nothing more respectful than calling her queen. Baylor <laughs> does have some of the best uh, nicknames in the, certainly at least in the Big 12. Shot clock now is getting skinny. And that's Ray Johnson making something out of nothing. Yeah, I mean, Iowa State is relentless right now in their attack off of the dribble. And then good defense by Kristen Scott on Melissa Smith. Iowa State's doing a nice job on Smith. When she gets the ball in the low block, if they're going to come with multiple defenders, they're going right away. They're not even get, giving her a chance to size up the situation. And that time, Scott got caught on her one-on-one, -on -one, but just outstanding defense. These are the top two scoring teams in the Big 12 in conference games. Baylor averaging just one point per game more than Iowa State and another play inside. That was yeah, everyone thought that we, we were going to see a bunch of threes, but again, it's the underrated aspect of what Iowa State does. They are not afraid to take you to the rim, and you can tell they're trying to get into the body of Baylor, trying to get them in some foul trouble and change Kim Mulkey's rotation. And it's worked, worked a little bit because Iowa State, Lachino already is in the bonus. It's Lexi Donarski, number 21, the first ever McDonald's All-American to go to Iowa State. And that's a school she wanted to go to since she was basically a kid. Her father had 
coach, someone who was a, an assistant at Iowa State. The whole family started going to Cyclone games, and that was it. Uh, Lexi was absolutely sold on being a Cyclone, and her dream came true. She is leading all Big 12 freshmen in scoring and can be very explosive. Has struggled a little bit in her last couple of games for the basketball, but boy, she had a great season. Second leading scorer next to Ashley Jones, who just hit a couple of free throws on this team. Urson goes out. And then an over the back on Baylor. Iowa State up three as we hit our first break. Stay right where you are. Everyone's favorite women's college basketball game is back. That's right. Teammate trivia right after this. Who is more likely to be late for the bus? Who is in trouble more often with Coach Finley? Who is a better cook? Who is better at math? And last but not least, who is more likely to wear the same dirty socks in consecutive games? Open your eyes. <laughs> Right <laughs> hey, at least you know who's going to wear the dirty socks, right? <laughs> <laughs> A little fun there with two freshmen, Lexi Donarski and Emily Ryan. At least they know who's got the lucky, dirty socks. I mean, that, that happened yep. pretty quickly. Um, and it seems like everyone's late from the bus. But how good have these freshmen been? They have accounted for 39% of Iowa State scoring, leading all Power 5 schools. And they have fit right in as, a boy, Ashley Jones making a living at the line. Uh, before we went to break, that last personal foul was on Nalissa Smith for Baylor. So she has two personals. Baylor being outscored 12 to 1 in the last three and a half minutes before that bucket went home. They had missed seven straight shots. That's a big before development. Edbo, I'm sorry, before Queen scored. That's a big development for Baylor. What happens now is the freshman, Hannah Gusters, comes into the game, doesn't have as much experience, also is not as mobile on the closeout on the three-point line. And so she has to be ready to move around and to guard off of the bounce. That's Aubrey Jones, the freshman little sister of Ashley. And that was just the second and third three that Iowa State has taken today. And the first one they have hit, Iowa State on average hits nine and a half per game, which is fourth best in the entire country, but just one so far today, still leading. Here's a three that goes in. And that's an important bucket by Dijanae Carrington. Welcome back after missing four games due to COVID protocol. She did not play in the first matchup between these two teams, and they need her outside shot to stretch this Iowa State defense. There's a turnover on the pickup by Dee Dee Richards as neither Car Carrington nor Caitlin Bickle played in that first game. And uh, Coach Mulkey talked about how important Bickle and Carrington are in being able to go out and guard on the perimeter. Did not have them in the loss a couple of weeks ago down in Waco. By the way, Bickle has played in this game but picked up two quick fouls for Baylor and is already on the bench. And you see right now, Donarski handling some of the point guard responsibilities. Ryan has that foul trouble. Very good ball movement here by Iowa State. Inside out, knocking it down, and then a piece of the paint by Moon Urson. Inside, outside action for Baylor on the other side for Carrington. Good double down on Egbo, but that left Carrington open over on the wing. No good. Egbo with an offensive rebound. Nice work. And that's important. That's important for Queen Egbo to establish herself as the dominant post in this game with an Alyssa Smith in that foul trouble. And Pam, in the last meeting between these two teams, Iowa State out-rebounded Baylor. And that just does not happen to the Baylor Lady Bears. They've only been out-rebounded 10 times in the last 153 games. The activity here of Queen Egbo in good position there by Ashley Jones. Give her the credit. She got her body there, had good position, but the long arms of Egbo and the athleticism 
we're seeing how talented this young woman really is. Now, she hasn't been as consistent as they would like, but she is really maturing after playing more of a support role off of the bench last year. They have needed her to step up. Gusters with the foul puts Kristen Scott at the free throw line for Iowa State. They've been in the bonus for quite a while now. Queen Egbo was the Big 12 sixth person of the year last year. Her number is pretty much identical uh, this year in her first year as a starter as a junior. Iowa State 10 for 10 from the free throw line, so more than half of their points coming from the charity strike. Egbo keeps it going, and then the second effort by Oliver pays off. Yeah, Trinity Oliver crushing Oliver it. does a really good job in helping Baylor on the offensive glass, and Kim Mulkey told us yesterday that that's where she can really give them a boost. And you can see they're out rebounding among the offensive glass, plus eight for Baylor, but Iowa State starting to find the bottom of the net on the three-point shots. That one by Kristen Scott, who was their five player, who was a 41% shooter from beyond the arc. And that's what concerns you, is they can play a five-out style as Carrington will get to the free throw line. But when Scott is playing outside the arc, that means your five player in this situation, Queen Egbo, who's not used to having to guard on the perimeter, has to come out. And that's what makes this Iowa State offense dangerous. Aubrey Jones called for the foul. Miller not yet in the bonus with a minute 38 left to go. So D.D. Richards with the inbound. And then the block by Scott on Egbo. You see Dee Dee Richards face guarding Ashley Jones, not allowing her to catch the basketball, not helping off. She did switch in that situation. Iowa State trying hard to get number 24 and White open on the low block. Yeah, she's trying to post her up. Ashley Jones has only taken two shots in this game. Again, averaging 24 and a half points per game, had 27 points when they played a couple of weeks ago against this Baylor club. But boy, uh, you could see why Dee Dee Richards was the National Defensive Player of the Year last year. Well, and Pam, I've always said, when you have a player like Jones that's great at getting position on the low block, your best post defense is your perimeter defense. You can't let them pass it in. Don't let them get a clean look. Yeah, because once she catches it down there, it's pretty much over. And an attempted steal. Looks like we're going to get a foul indeed on Iowa State. Second one on Aubrey Jones, and now Dee Dee Richards heads to the free throw line, and boy, what an inspiring story she has been with that collision with Moon Urson that left her paralyzed for a little bit, literally had to basically learn how to walk again, and we talked to her yesterday. She says she's feeling fine, ready to go. She was playing, what, about a month after the injury? It's just unbelievable the way she has come back. Just one of the most incredible stories we've had in women's college basketball this season was the comeback of Dee Richards. And not only did she come back as Iowa State nails the three, but she's running the point guard spot, something she had never done before. When you look at her assist numbers, it makes sense because she has just got a talent for passing the ball. It's unbelievable to think that she really hadn't played it until this year, her senior season. Feuerbach hit the three for Iowa State. On the other end, Egbo over Scott. Rebound handled. Dijanae Carrington has made an impact since she came in. And Kristen Scott is playing as tough a post defense as she can down low. But again, the offensive glass. Baylor has 10 and one for Iowa State. Shot clock is off to end the first quarter. Ashley Jones got doubled. Richards came over to help Urson, and that forced the turnover. Defense on Ashley Jones often takes a team effort, and that's what we saw here, the switch with Urson, and then the help down on Richards. Carrington had her from the backside. A great defensive play there by Baylor. Oh, Iowa State with a three-point lead after one quarter of play, 10 of their 25 points coming from the free throw line.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Tostitos. Get to the good stuff. And this is some good stuff right here. This is Moon Urson working out in the beautiful weight room in uh, Baylor's basketball facility. And she's got some major strength. Well, China Robinson-like strength, I believe. <laughs> yes, in my wildest <laughs> dreams. In fact, I wish I had anywhere close to Moon Urson's vertical, which is 34 inches. She is an incredible athlete. And you see her numbers there and how much better she's gotten year after year in her career. Even when she wasn't getting any playing time, when you talk to Kim Mulkey, she said Moon just kept working, was patient, waiting for her opportunity. She hasn't really made a strong mark in scoring today, but she's got some rebounds. She's always there defensively. And you just love it when your hardest worker becomes your best player. And Moon Urson, number 10 in gold for Baylor. She benches over 198 pounds and squats about 287 pounds. And keep in mind, she's 5'6", and uh, probably the strongest player in the Big 12, certainly pound for pound, and as you mentioned, toughed it out. And Baylor's trying to tie it up, and they do indeed tie it up. Carrington making a big noise off the bench again, did not play a couple of weeks ago against us against Iowa State, was in COVID protocol, and she is indeed the Stanford transfer. Ashley Jones with the miss from outside. Ken Mulkey talked about how much they missed Carrington a couple of weeks ago, and Carrington has made her presence known with eight points already coming off the bench. And that's the other player they were missing, Caitlin Bickle, who gets the two to get Baylor back in front. And both players are still working their way back after missing some time. In fact, Dijon Carrington only practiced 30 minutes on Friday, 45 on Saturday. And here she is in the game. And there's Kristen Scott again, dragging Queen Egbo to the perimeter. That's the second three for their center, Scott. Got her thousandth point of her career and the loss to South Carolina earlier this season for Iowa State. This is a great pass out of the post by Queen Egbo. I don't even know how she saw Carrington to make that pass. And Baylor has struggled some passing out of the double. And then Kristen Scott again dragging the five out to the perimeter and knocking down the long ball. Iowa State, four of seven from three. They have a better percentage from three than they do from inside the arc in this game. And Jones struggling continues offensively as that hit the bottom of the rim. Carrington gets it over. Urson spots up for three and buries it. You feel the difference in the flow for Baylor's offense just having hit a couple of threes. I mean, that sagging defense by Iowa State can really just suffocate you offensively and what the three-point shot can do is, is really incredible we see that happening here and that was Urson's first basket of the game Jones continuing to be hounded Ashley just one of five from the floor Richards fouled by Wise Every time Baylor has been able to get a piece of the paint off of the drive or made a good pass out of the double, they find an open shooter. And that's exactly what Carrington did in connecting with Boone Urson. And Bill Fenley, the head mind. coach for Iowa State, excuse me, he told us that he was a huge Moon Urson fan. Oh, yeah. He said he loved her approach to the game. And he said every season, Kim Mulkey has one guard on his team that does exactly what she wants. And he said that Moon Urson is that player. And she doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but she is shooting 40% from long range, which is a very respectable number. Taylor outscoring Iowa State so far 10 to three in this second quarter. Iowa State only took 10 shots in the first quarter. First quarter, pardon me, still had the lead thanks to free throws mostly. And that might be two personal fouls on Moon Urson. Actually, it looks oh, like they, they gave it to Andrews. Sarah Andrews. So okay. a break, yeah, for Urson, who was close to the action. And now Lexi Donarski at the line, one of the three freshmen who start for Coach Fenley. 
And this is something that Bill Finley said he wanted to see Lexi do, was to get to the free throw line. She's 8 for 38 from the field in her last three games and said he wants her to start getting downhill, using her speed, getting to the free throw line to try to get out of this funk she's been in. Was able to hit both of the free throws on that trip to get Iowa State back to within two. Person all the way across the court. Now inside to Bickle. And with Scott out of the game, that's Morgan Kane, the backup post player on the defensive end for Iowa State. Ashley now Jones. Carrington getting her shot on Jones. The number of players that we've seen defending Ashley Jones. We need to start taking account. And how about Carrington running the floor to finish on the other end? Naylor is so good in, in transition. You see how their half-court offense can sometimes get stagnant, but in transition, and that was something Bill Finley told us. He said, we want to focus on seeing the front of their jerseys, not the back of their jerseys, yeah. on defense. Ashley Jones still can't hit from the outside. Good offensive board by Wise. Gives him a fresh 20. That was an off-balance shot by Donarski. And there's the transition again. Pays off with the foul. Take a look at that speed in transition right here. Moon Urson gets the ball. Then the freshman, Sarah Andrews, going strong to the rack. Reminds you so much of Odyssey Sims and has a relationship with Odyssey. She's actually from Irving, Texas. And uh, I'll tell you, Pam, in watching film of her, there were so many moments when I said, wow, she looks so much like Odyssey, especially on defense. Boy, and what a compliment that is. Odyssey Sims, one of the greatest players in the history, certainly, of Baylor women's basketball. Good career in the WNBA going on right now, even after she had a baby. Came back from Minnesota. What a story she was this past summer. And that's a travel. Moon Urson forcing another turnover. It is interesting as much foul trouble as Baylor has gotten into early with that bonus in the first quarter. They're still taking some risks defensively. I mean, Moon definitely reached in a bit. And as you're watching the way it's been called with the officials, you definitely have to be careful. But Baylor is taking their chances, calculated. You know, Melissa Smith picked up a couple of fouls in the first quarter. We haven't seen her since as Kim Mulkey coaches them up. Baylor also doing a great job of holding on to the basketball. They have not turned it over in the last 10 and a half minutes. But Iowa State has, and they've got seven yes. turnovers for nine Baylor points. There's Moon. Moon Urson has scored at least 20 points in three of the last five games, averaging 17 and a half points for the Bears over that period. Ashley Jones finally hits from the outside. She had missed her first three threes. Egbo blocked again by Scott. And then Urson disrupts on the other end. Iowa State down five. Another fun battle between Baylor and Iowa State. Ashley Jones missed a couple, but she's not going to miss another three as she nails that one. Bang. Rebecca Lobo going to be with you coming up on this E-Trade Halftime Report. We are talking UConn. They bounce back from their first loss of the season, and we'll get you set for the game of the year between number one Louisville and number two NC State. But right now, Rebecca, what stood out to you from the first half? Well, that Iowa State has been able to stay in this game, even though they've taken 15 fewer field goal attempts because of turnovers, and Baylor's been all over the offensive glass. Five-point game right now. Pam and LaChina, back out to you guys. All right, Kelsey and Rebecca the Lobo, we will be seeing you soon. And there you see the stories that, uh, that they were talking about. Iowa State basically, LaChina, because of three-point shooting and free throws staying in this game. Yeah, I mean, they came out just really forcing the one-on-one -on -one and getting Baylor in foul trouble. And 
I think Baylor did start to play a little more on their heels defensively, and then three-point shot really opened up, and this is what they'll do. They will pull up at the three-point line with no play run, in transition, off of the bounce. They will get to their three shot in multiple ways, so you have to be ready with hands up and, and ready to contest. And remember, too, that they have come from behind to take this lead without Melissa Smith. Melissa, their leading scorer and rebounder, got a couple of fouls in the first quarter, and I don't think that we've seen her out there since. But boy, Dijanae De Carrington coming in off the bench with 10 points and a balanced ba Baylor attack. There is uh, Nalissa, who uh, does not look ready to come back in the game. But uh, well, Queen Baylor Egbo has some nice things, but Kristen Scott's defense has been better in these recent possessions. And there's another O board and score for the Bears. Oh, Nalissa Smith happy to see that on the sideline as. Uh, Bickle put it in. Yes, how about Kristen Scott with five blocks for Iowa State already? Just five on her own in the first half. Boy, that's tough. Just one and done. Emily Ryan trying to make something happen. And then Baylor in the open court. You just can't stop him. That's Carrington again. Baylor all of a sudden up nine. Timeout in Ames. Take a look at our Big 12 and ACC Big Monday games on ESPN tomorrow and on the app. At first, it's Duke and Miami at 7 Eastern. This is men's basketball. And then go over to the Big 12. Look at this matchup. Number 24, Oklahoma, gets to go to Lubbock to take on Texas Tech. Check it out tomorrow. ACC and Big 12 stuff on ESPN and the app. Dijanae Carrington has been a thorn in the side of uh, this Iowa State team coming in off the bench with a dozen points and then force that turnover. She's done so many things. She's guarded Ashley Jones, which I think is a great matchup because she is so physically strong. She actually used to play football uh, when she was younger and enjoyed that sport. But you see the physicality. She's hit threes to open up the offense. We saw her driving the lane and getting some passes, getting the offense moving. What a welcome addition. Moon Urson couldn't get it to go. Rebound taken down by Ashley Jones. Iowa State just 2 of 12 from the floor in this quarter. Jones has missed 6 of her 7 shots. Does have a 3 and that's it. In part because of defense like that, Moon Urson. And Baylor with a very rare turnover gives it right back. Oh boy, Iowa State is having to work hard for every single shot. Most of them are not falling in the second quarter. Just the third Baylor turnover. And then the backup point guard, Ray Johnson, steps back for the three. I don't know that you can go behind the screen on anyone that plays for the Cyclones. So Moon Urson will get a little talking to by Kim Mulkey. And then Johnson just drew a, a charge foul. And I don't care what the percentage is. Everyone on this Iowa State team is locked and loaded from three. Moon Urson goes under the screen. That's a no-no. And Johnson in running the point. Emily Ryan, the true freshman, has been struggling with some foul trouble. Emily has not scored and has a couple of fouls. Ashley Jones working. Urson comes over on the double to foil her yet again. One thing Iowa State has to make sure they're not doing on the drive is looking for the foul. You got to look to complete the play. You got to look to score the bucket, not look to get fouled. Dee Dee Richards commits the foul and walks right over, and Kim has something to say. I believe she said why. It looked like, you know, when your mom gives you a talking to, and you, <laughs> you want to say something back, but. You wait yeah. for her to walk away first, and then you might have a mumble, but you definitely don't say anything while she's there. <laughs> no. Yes, discretion, <laughs> the better part of valor right there for Dee Dee Richards, the senior. Dee Dee with a couple of fouls, so she'll probably sit down for the rest of the half, and then the conversion for Jones. Only about 1,300 fans are allowed into Hilton Coliseum. They saw them beat Baylor in March here. There's a held ball. Possession arrow turns it over. 
Yeah, I'm kind of feeling for Queen Egbo right now. She had a tough chest pass that she turned over, which can be very difficult to catch right here. Just great post up, great body use by Jones, even with some defenders on the backside ready to help. But then in that situation, there's too many bodies in the paint to make that pass to Queen Egbo. You got to help her out. Maybe move the ball around, get some reversal, because they are waiting to pack the paint and surround her by bodies. Spoken like a true post player. Baylor, by the way, yeah, four straight turnovers. <laughs> not our I, fault. I, I feel your pain, buddy. Four straight <laughs> turnovers for Baylor after they had none in the previous 13 minutes. Bickle. Bickle with six off the bench. And Bickle and Harrington, the two players who did not play a couple of weeks ago, have combined for 18 points off the bench for Kim Mulkey. And there's Ashley Jones time. I mean, what do you do with that? I mean, how can you guard that? No. Nothing gonna, you can do. Just hope it doesn't go in, right? A three to counter on the other end by Sarah Andrews, the freshman from Irving. Ashley Jones was left open momentarily Boy. and almost made him pay. Andrews didn't, didn't cover her. Lucky Baylor Bears. And now the shot clock is off Iowa State. Having to defend and Baylor hoping to hold it for the last shot of the half. A foul as Carrington missed, but it looked like there was a foul away for the, from the ball as Bickle hit the deck. Oh, definitely contact there on the screen. That's called going through the screen. Yeah. Ashley Jones' first foul. But a good second quarter as uh, Baylor outscores Iowa State by nine. They have not lost when leading at the half, and they are up now. Time to go to the E-Trade Halftime Report with Kelsey and Rebecca. Pam, thanks. Welcome into this E-Trade Halftime Report. Alongside Rebecca Lobo, I'm Kelsey Riggs. It is a six-point game at the break, and Rebecca, watching these two teams, they find success doing very different things. Yeah, it's such a fun contrast in styles for me to watch this particular matchup. And you start with Iowa State, and they had so much success, especially in the first quarter, getting to the free throw line. Well, where else are they going to score? They are going to spread you out and hit shots from three. And especially, you saw Kristen Scott, their five player will also step out and hit shots from three. They were seven of 14 from the three-point line in that first half. And that is so much different from what Baylor wants to do when they get to the offensive end. They're not going to spread you out and look for the threes. Baylor is going to pound the ball inside. Iowa State surrounding players here, they're around Alyssa Smith. You don't get it the first time, you go up a second time. You don't get it the second time, you go up the third time. Finally, on the fourth one, Baylor was all over the offensive glass in that first half. They had 13 offensive rebounds. They were in the paint. 24 points in the paint. It's so much fun for me to watch a post player on one side stepping out and hitting threes, and then for Baylor just pounding it inside. Even their guards, DJ Carrington, did a great job getting in on the action as well. So old school pounded inside, new school looking to shoot from the perimeter. And the last time these two teams played earlier in this season, Iowa State snapped Baylor's 61 game home win streak. So this is one you're definitely going to want to stick around for the end. Another team that had their winning streak snapped this week was UConn. They're coming off the loss to Arkansas, facing number 17 DePaul. We go to the third quarter. UConn up big. Paige Beckers drives, finds Avina Westbrook in the corner. She knocks down the three. Huskies up by 18. And Rebecca, they continue to build on that lead. Yeah, Coach Oriama has been. Tim Williams had been playing great, struggled a bit, especially in the second half against Arkansas. She had a big game. Paige Beckers had a big game, especially after a loss. A good performance from the backcourt for UConn. First career double-double for her. She also became the first UConn player with 20 points, 10 assists in a game. Where's this Diana Taurasi? Stewart back in 2015. How is Diana Taurasi <laughs> not on that list? 
Rebecca, when you look at this UConn team and the way that they bounced back, I mean, what is it about them that impresses you the most, especially with Paige? Uh, well, she has just been able to uh, raise her game every time Coach Oriama has challenged her. And what's going to be interesting to watch as Connecticut continues to go through this season is how much better can they be on the defensive end of the floor? Coach Oriama said that their loss against Arkansas was the worst defensive performance he has seen in 25 years. Arkansas was able to dribble penetrate. They were able to get to the free throw line. When UConn went zone, Arkansas was able to hit from, from the perimeter. So UConn, we're used to them being a dominant defensive team. How quickly can they improve and, and, and be what we've become accustomed to on that end of the floor? I came in earlier and told Rebecca the stat that I had seen about, about they had not lost back-to-back -back games in 1,005 games. And immediately you said... I was on that team. Back in 1993. <laughs> Sorry for bringing it up. My bad. That is dominance there. Let's keep it rolling now. Another top 20 team play in Tennessee hosting Florida. Third quarter. Falls up by seven. Ray Burrell takes it herself. Welcome back, Baylor are trying to get back at Iowa State. We beat them a couple of weeks ago. The Bears are up by six. Pam Ward along with the China Robinson. And boy, Baylor got some help off the bench in this game. Well, they didn't have DJ Carrington the first time these two teams met, but she's been a difference maker from long range. Baylor only averages three three-pointers a game. They've already got four, so she has opened up the offense with her long-range shooting. And on the defensive end for Iowa State, really impressed by Kristen Scott. Five blocks in just the first half of this game. We mentioned how effective Queen Egbo can be in a matchup like this. Uh, Melissa Smith, who was in foul trouble, but she could also really give you problems on the interior. But with all the offensive rebounds that Baylor was able to corral, Scott was a difference maker. And the five blocks, by the way, for Kristen Scott is a new career high. There's Dijanae Carrington, the, the transfer from Stanford. And uh, with the five blocks, Scott has passed Bridget Carlton now, third place all time in Iowa State for uh, block shots. Carlton playing in the WNBA now, had a good year with the Minnesota Lynx. Along with Odyssey Sense. And Pickle is but here we go, Iowa going State. to get the start here in the third quarter for Baylor. Yeah, being uh, rewarded for her six-point effort. Did pick up a couple of quick fouls and came back in and got six points as you take a look at some of the important numbers. Iowa State, 50% from three, but struggling from two. And uh, as usual, Baylor killing it in the paint and with rebounding. Well, there were a couple things that Iowa State did really well in that first half that they'll need to continue. Number one is they started to do a better job of defending around the rim. Uh, if Baylor got an offensive rebound in some of their paint point attempts. The other thing was I thought getting to the free throw line really saved them. Um, they did hit seven threes, which is a great number at a, a good percentage, but they have struggled a little bit in, in some of their continuity of the offense. So they have got to continue to be aggressive in getting to the rim. And then for Baylor, it was their offensive rebounding. You know, their mid-range game is usually very stout. Moon Urson can shoot from mid-range. Trinity Oliver, their two-pointers um, on the pull-up have not been there, but their offensive rebounding has. And how about Melissa Smith only playing five minutes in the first half because of foul trouble? She just hit two free throws to finish for uh, Feuerbach. But the foul that put Smith on the line with China, that was the third personal foul for Emily Ryan, the, the uh, freshman point guard who only played five minutes herself in the first half because of foul trouble. Picked up her third foul about 20 seconds into the third quarter. Well, on that last possession, Iowa State looked to drive on Melissa Smith, so they may be looking to get her in a little more foul trouble, but in transition, the three-point shot goes for Ashley Jones. And Ashley Jones, who took most of their shots in the third quarter, hits her third three of the game. Jones had a double-double in the win at Baylor a couple of weeks ago. Baylor won 58 straight home games in the Big 12 before that loss. And there is the third foul. You just talked about it, LaChana, and Melissa Smith with the lean in on the charge. A little two-man game, Dee Dee Richards and Smith, but Smith doing too much possibly with that arm. But what a quick release there for Jones. In transition, she's always ready to shoot it. And she got some confidence in that three-point shot in the first half. Missed a couple, but kept it kept shooting. Of course, that's what Bill Finley wants them to do on the offensive end. Let it fly. Moon Urson with the ball. Gets it inside to Egbo, who turns beautifully done. I mean, Egbo struggled. Turned the ball over five times in the first half. And 
There you see her numbers. How about Moon Urson? She had nine rebounds and now has 11. She picked up two quick ones, so double-digit rebounding for the 5-6 guard. And there is a drawn foul. Super Tuesday coming up, 7 Eastern time. This is a terrific men's basketball game between Baylor and Texas. Two teams in the top five in the Big 12. Check it out coming up Tuesday on ESPN and the ESPN app. And she's on the bench with three fouls. But first, Kim had something to say to her. Melissa Smith. Urebach at the line gets one out of two. You're going to get a talking to by Kim Mulkey. I think <laughs> so. Guarantee that. Egbo gets it back to Carrington, who was the offensive star in the first half. And the foul charts are going to get Egbo on the moving screen. So one trend you see developing early is the bigs of Baylor picking up fouls outside of the lane on offense. That's how Delissa Smith picked up her foul, having to try to create Queen Egbo outside of the lane looking to help create a play. And so you see what Iowa State is attempting to do, and you have to make an adjustment. Make sure your arms aren't flailing. You know, be careful in using your off arm to clear space. You gotta adjust. Egbo goes to the bench, joining Alyssa Smith. Both of them have three personal fouls for the Bears, and there's a nice set. Madison Wise with the finish. Baylor went small. I mean, without those two players, you mentioned this is a smaller lineup for Baylor, so why not go inside if you're Iowa State? And there's Moon Urson with the mid-range jumper. It was not clicking for her in the first half, but that is her shot. But did so many other things well, including playing great defense. As we mentioned, rebounding the ball was to help Baylor get that halftime lead. And now with the bigs out, you see Scott attack the paint. Carrington. Ray Johnson, number four, the starting point guard last year, having to pay, play extended minutes with Ryan in foul trouble this afternoon. Not exactly sure where the confusion was here. It looked like maybe Ray Johnson thought she heard a whistle. I'm not sure what happened, but she pulled up short on the floater, almost as though she wasn't going to shoot it. And then she picked up the foul after the miss. And now Ryan is back. I believe Ryan is back in the game now that Johnson has gone to the bench. Another turnover. And that is the finish for Feuerbach, the freshman. And that is too easy if you're Baylor's defense. Keep in mind, this is the team that is number one in field goal percentage defense in the country. And that was pretty much a straight line drive right to the rim. I mean, Feuerbach just, <laughs> I don't know if Nalissa Smith was attempting to help, but more than anything, she got in the way. Riley Feuerbach, her grandfather, played on Iowa State's only Final Four team in the Iowa State Basketball Hall of Fame. And his uh, granddaughter following to Ames, Iowa. She is actually from Illinois. They really like her athleticism in the starting lineup. She's one of the better defenders on the team. Good shot selection. Bill Finley said she's still finding that consistency, as most freshmen are, but... And another just wide open look for Iowa State early in transition. That was Wise. Madison Wise hitting from the outside. She has five points in the quarter, but then Deanie Richards able to get inside. And that's the pass Melissa Smith needs to be able to make when she is doubled. Iowa State coming right back, starting to heat up after a very cold third quarter, and the game is tied. Madison Wise with back-to-back -back threes. 
Kim Mulkey is going to have a word with her team because this wide open three, in fact, two of them from Iowa State cannot happen. Welcome back to Iowa State and the Cyclones have pulled some momentum in the last few possessions from the three-point line in transition. No one communicating, no one getting out on shooters. You have to be ready to run wide defensively on this Iowa State offense because they can put five outside the arc. They're not interested necessarily in running right to the bucket and it was Madison Wise who Bill Finley calls our super sub getting down the floor and setting up for those long range shots. He said she can play any position. We need her to fill in off of the bench and she has been a welcome addition in the rotation in recent minutes. Wise hitting the back to back threes. There's a foul on the Cyclones on the rebound attempt. The other three was hit by Ashley Jones. And yes, Melissa Smith is back in there. The leading scorer and rebounder for Baylor in there playing with three personal fouls. Number one in gold. Iowa State shooting 67% to start this quarter. And they force the turnover. And that's Fearbach. We talked about her defense earlier in the broadcast. That is one reason why she is in the starting lineup. Disruptive. Three true freshmen starting for Bill Fenley all season long. Wise, nowhere to go momentarily. Donarski's had a rather quiet game. Takes it right to Dee Dee Richards. That was loud enough. And she likes to drive left. Iowa State retakes the lead. After being down by as many as nine, Moon Urson. Just cool as can be, Moon already has tied her career high in this game with rebounds with 12. And now she's knocking on the door of the double-double with nine points. Another three, another good look. This time off the rim, rebounded nicely by I Smith. Would, I would go back to that same play. Run Moon Urson off of a couple of screens on the baseline. That's how she was able to get open for that mid-range look. Carrington got open. Bickle boards it and then almost threw it away. Great hustle to save it. That was Smith who went over and now is getting in position under the basket and ultimately outside. Urson drives. Boy, Jones is posting up hard. We haven't called her name for a while on offense. That's an air ball on the attempt by Donarski. Yeah, Jones had the 1-3 earlier in this third quarter, but that's it. Bickle got it picked momentarily. Ball will go to Baylor. When we come back, what a game going on in Ames, tied up at 59. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Tostitos. Get to the good stuff. Speaking of stuffing, we got some, we got some Baylor Lady Bears jamming in practice. Got some high flyers. I mean, that's too easy. Are you kidding me? The hops, Queen Eggbo, Melissa Smith definitely on those. I wanted to see Boo. I wanted to see that 34-inch vertical. Yeah, because I know she there. can grab rim. Dee Dee Richards confirmed it yesterday. They used to play against each other in AAU. I need to see it. Yes, absolutely. There you take a look at our game summary. Five lead changes. Iowa State getting it done a lot with the three-point shot, which is uh, part of their arsenal. Ashley Jones with 19 points, but has only taken two shots in this third quarter. Did hit a three. Oh, boy, that was good defense by Scott, but Smith scored anyway. High level of difficulty on that bucket by Smith. All right, Scott was in good position. Scott with the five blocks already. Just better by the offensive player that time. Okay. Baylor bounces back on top. 
trouble. Nalissa Smith was in foul trouble in the first half, but when she can get her footing and especially against single coverage, which she hasn't seen a lot of that today, she can rise and fire with the best of them. Twenty seconds to shoot. Purebach, the freshman, guarded by Urson, the senior. Now Jones posting up. Carrington with the defense. Richards, Dee Dee Richards came in at the last second and disrupted Ashley Jones, but they make it Egbo with a foul there. Yeah, Richards was credited with the block and then the foul that sends Jones to the free throw line where she is six of six. It was Egbo and that's four fouls on Queen. So she'll sit. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus as we remind you to watch the X Games at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Coverage includes the men's snowboard superpipe and Lachina's favorite, the Wendy Ski Knuckle Huck. <laughs> and she will go on Twitter and explain that and I believe live tweet during the event. My mother was very clear with us. <laughs> it would be no skiing. She broke her leg for one time trying it. And that was it. You were banned from the slopes. That was it for life. Yeah, those X Games guys, they will. Uh, oh, my. But that's coming up tonight. Good rebound by traffic. Smith. Carrington Smith. draws the foul. Melissa Smith just snagged an incredible rebound to start that transition for Baylor. You feel that Baylor's offense has been very hard to come by consistently in this third quarter. And so transition is good for them when they can get defensive stops. This is Donarski's first foul. Carrington. Kim Mulkey looks on. Carrington was a very good player at Stanford. Got not one, but two degrees when she graduated. It was one degree at Stanford. Come on. But she got two of them. And uh, now playing her final year, what could be her final year at Baylor. And that's nice inside for Smith. But they were missing the first half. Coverage. But what was interesting about the post-entry pass is that Dee Dee Richards is not really known as a strong scorer, so the defense will sag off of her. She still finds a way to get it into the post. Well, Dee Dee Richards averaging 6.7 assists this year. That is eighth in the country. Missed that jump shot. Rebound taken down by Feuerbach. Just four Carrington assists so far for Richards, excuse me. Carrington has done a really nice job defensively on Ashley Jones. To me, she has been the best matchup. They tried a couple of different looks on her, but Carrington has been fairly disruptive, but she will get called with a touch foul there. Again, Dee Dee Richards, you know, defense will sag off of her, but she found an angle to get to Delissa Smith, who has one-on-one -on -one coverage and gets it to go. And I just, again, can't say enough about the passing ability. And, and one thing that Dee Dee told us about just really embracing this point guard position is she had to get in the gym and do full court one-on-one -on -one with defense because a lot of the smaller players would try to get into her body and get steals from her. She's 6'1", so she's a little taller than what you would expect bringing the ball down. And so she had to get in there and do work, and she has gotten more comfortable in that position. As Boy, the another rebound on. for... Another rebound, excuse me, for Urson. Shot off by Smith. And that should be a foul. It looked like Bierbach may have come in on the leg of Urson. And then a blocking foul called on Richards, who can't quite believe it. That is the third personal on Dee Dee, who joins uh, Nelissa Smith with three, Queen Egbo on the bench with four. And Iowa State just crushing it at the free throw line. Donarski steps in. Look at the free throws. They just don't miss, 19 of 20. 
Again, this is a team that's fourth in the nation, hitting 81% on the season from the line, and they're over that today. The lead is won for the Cyclones. A chance for Melissa Smith to head to the free throw line. I like that decision by Smith because she should, she could have just pulled up and shot a jump shot because the pick and roll, she can pop on that. But she challenged the defense to guard her at the rim, to get some pain points, but also to pick up some fouls on Iowa State. Both teams in the bonus, just 41 seconds left though in the third quarter. When these two teams played two weeks ago, Nalissa had a double-double and three blocks. In the loss in Waco, Iowa State trying to beat Baylor for the third straight time, which they have never done. And only Oklahoma back in the, the Halcyon days, I think the Paris Twins has, have beaten them three times in a row since Kim got there. Urson with the block. Incredible defense by Moon Urson right at the rim. That's where she used that 34-inch vertical. Wow. Yeah, you can see the ups there. Shot clock off for the Bears. As Dee Dee looks over Kim Mulkey, who's a tremendous point guard back at Louisiana Tech. Inside, but Smith couldn't handle it cleanly. Feuerbach has it, and she lost it. So just under two seconds now for Baylor. Carrington inbounds at the hash. Smith could not get the shot off. Baylor up by one, a great fourth quarter coming up for Ames. No matter which shade of blue you bleed, this rivalry is the very best that college basketball has to offer. So North Carolina Duke then playing Saturday at 6 Eastern time and uh, right here, boy, what a game. Bill Fenley's team trying to beat Baylor for the third straight time. And they've not lost three straight games against one team in the Big 12 since 07, one team period that was Oklahoma back in 07. Kim Mulkey's team full at full strength today. And they have the one-point lead as we head into the fourth quarter. Iowa State outscored Baylor by five in the third. We've had seven ties, eight lead changes. And Baylor starts off the fourth with the bucket. Moon Urson with the double-double. I mean, that play for Moon Urson coming middle for the pull-up jumper has been money. And you got to credit Iowa State. They have been scrappy defensively, just taking Baylor out of their rhythm. Baylor with two losses on the season, one of them to Arkansas, the other to this Iowa State team. Shot clock winding down. Feuerbach, that's a tough pass. Richards able to get a hand on it. Two seconds to shoot for the Cyclones. Emily Ryan, who has not scored, the starting point guard in foul trouble all day with the inbounds. They need a shot right away by Jones, able to take a bounce. A little bit too strong, rebound by Dee Dee Richards. I was curious to see if Bailey would try to push and get something early in transition, but Dee Dee Richards is gonna hold up and run a play here. And it's Moon Urson, mid-range. Another offensive board, this time by Trinity Oliver. Melissa Smith shoots over Scott and scores. Melissa Smith saddled by foul trouble in the first half. Now with 14 points and the lead gets to five. Ryan picks up her dribble, needs help. Janarski loves Denarski. to go left. Yeah. Richards just sealed her off beautifully. 
Boy, but a tough move by Donarski coming back right. Just could not get it to go. I am in awe of her confidence taking on the reigning National Defensive Player of the Year, but can't get it. Edie Richards with the stout defense. Edie Richards in the last five games, not only great defense, but averaging eight and a half assists. How about 42 assists to only 10 turnovers during that stretch, stretch for Richards? And we asked her yesterday, Dee, Dee about that, about the assists being up. And right away she said, it's simply because I have great teammates. Did not take any of the credit and uh, gave it all to her, to her teammates at Baylor. And we also yeah. got to meet her uh, through video, her, her schnoodle, tuxedo, her cute little dog. Half so schnauzer, cute. half poodle. And you don't I'm even glad. like dogs, and you thought that was a cute dog. Oh, do not say I don't <laughs> like dogs. That is not true. That's not true. She loves, she loves dog. And while they have a clock issue, let's get you a promo. And it is a big one. There's three Big 12 games of no Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have. Both of these teams, you can see them, Baylor, Kansas, Thursday, Iowa State, Texas Tech, Saturday, and on the men's side, Iowa State, number two, Baylor, on February 23rd. Absolutely sign up at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Great stuff coming up in the Big 12. Iowa State down by five. Now, they had to add a second, and it took minutes to do that, so there's eight... 14 and counting left. Every second counts, you know. And looks like it could be going down to the wire. Baylor off to a good start in the fourth quarter, and it gets even better with the drive. The dribble weave offense from Baylor and the nice take by Carrington. Dejanay De Carrington, what a difference off the bench for the Bears. Last two times these teams played, excitement abounded. Last game of the regular season last year on a tie game. Just 1.3 seconds left to go. Ashley Jones hits a free throw to win it by one. And two weeks ago in the fourth quarter, Ashley Jones absolutely took over. She had 27 points, 12 rebounds, and was named the National Player of the Week. And Baylor won both games, but right now, boy, or excuse me, Iowa State won both games. Baylor has outscored Iowa State 6 nothing in this quarter to take this lead. Cyclones have missed eight straight shots before that one splashed through. You really have to be careful helping off from the perimeter of Iowa State because you gotta be able to get back to contest to three. And that was a great play, the fake post up for the diagonal skip pass. And then Feuerbach, the freshman, nailed it. And that's the one thing, Iowa State never really out of the game because they are so good at hitting threes and score in a hurry. Ashley Jones today, by the way, 23 points, 10 of 10 from the free throw line to lead Iowa State. And we get four Other players hand, and double figures for Baylor. I don't think Baylor has hit a three in the second in the second half. Carrington can't get the roll. Big board by Ashley Jones. Ashley able to get inside of Oliver. It's incredibly important for you to get your matchups the way you want them in transition against Iowa State, especially against Jones, because if you're not in position, she will take advantage of the mismatch. Just like that, it's a two-point lead for Baylor. Carrington guarded by Ashley Jones, gives it up to Moon Erson, who has a double-double. Richards. Rims out, foul on the floor against the Cyclones. Ashley Jones is so savvy and her ha basketball IQ is, is very high. So she assesses her defense and she's got a smaller defender on her. So she dribbles her right down to the post and uses that size advantage to get a score inside. Bill Fenley, the head coach says that Ashley Jones is like an old school player, just somebody who loves basketball, 
is in the gym all the time. In fact, during the, the COVID shutdown, she went to a, a friend's house where, and worked out in a barn. Well, it's sort of a kind of, you know, pimped out barn. It was a really nice barn with a basketball <laughs> court inside, but she just was looking for places to play. She, all of her sisters play basketball and she just loves to play. And you can tell by the way she goes after everything on the floor. Let's take a look at that barn. I mean, from the outside, it looks a little like a barn, but it actually, on the inside, looks a lot like a basketball court. Yeah, like, you could actually... Really I'll take that I mean, that my rec day. center, where I grew up, didn't have <laughs> a bucket that looked like no. that. I mean, that is top-notch barn basketball facility that material is, there. That is a quality barn that uh, she and her sisters were able to, to work out in her... Younger sister Aubrey is a freshman on this team, and there's another Jones sister who's in high school who we hear is like really good, like the other ones aren't. It's just a great <laughs> family. That's an emphatic move by Smith, took the hard bounce. You could hear Baylor telling Smith, you're by yourself, helping her get a feel for what the read may be when she catches it in the post. And again, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, going to be tough to stop her and, and Scott has been as stout as a defender as you could ask tonight. Third foul on Scott who had the five blocks in the first half. Scott has not scored in the second half however. College basketball coming your way on Monday. Big Monday Duke and Miami 7 Eastern time. That's on the men's side on ESPN and the ESPN app. And follow that with Oklahoma and Texas Tech at 9 Eastern. A little ACC Big 12 doubleheader coming your way tomorrow night. And tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Pretty good women's game. NC yeah. State, Louisville. We heard uh, Rebecca Lobo and Kelsey Riggs breaking it down at halftime. Good steal there by Baylor. Dana Evans and company. Boy, has she been fun to watch in the ACC. Definitely my front runner for ACC Player of the Year. She won it last year. Hope Elisa Kunain can play for NC State tomorrow, number uh, one and two before at least NC State lost last week. But uh, we'll look forward to that tomorrow night. Lots of great basketball. But right now, Baylor trying to beat this Iowa State team and Melissa Smith. They are playing through Smith on every offensive possession. And to me, that's the sure thing. Yeah, that's a great strategy for this Baylor Bear team. Smith just four points in the first half because she played only five minutes, had a couple of personal fouls, but Melissa Smith starting to take over. Great defense there by DJ Carrington. But going back to the last possession, Smith has a face-up game. She turns to see where the defense may be coming from. Single coverage and what a use of the glass. That was just a strong move all the way around from Smith. Melissa Smith is outscoring Iowa State this quarter. Melissa with six points, the Cyclones just five. Jones dribbles right into the trap and Melissa Smith can't believe a whistle was forthcoming. You can't, you can't reach there if you're Melissa Smith. You cannot. If anything, you stand, you wall up. So when Jones turns, she sees a body, but you cannot reach in because now you have four fouls. Iowa State's gone over two minutes without a point. Still very much in this. Jones traveled. They got her. You could see Carrington trying to draw the charge, fell down, and then Ashley took a couple of steps. You made sure that Jones see, saw a crowd, that she saw another body once Carrington went down, and that was enough to disrupt her and cause the turnover. Carrington uh, rolls it in. Dejanay Carrington. A 6 nothing run now for Baylor as the lead goes back up to eight. You see Carrington with 17 points. Season high 24 at Arkansas. That was one of the two losses that they had and that Arkansas loss looking not bad at all since Arkansas knocked off Connecticut just a couple of days ago. Well, I'm impressed with Dijanae Carrington's conditioning. 
I mean, coming into this game, Kim Mulkey was concerned about how many minutes she could play just because she's been somewhat limited in practice and has not practiced much coming off of the COVID protocol break. But she yeah, has her... been a game changer. Yeah, pardon me. This is uh, Dijanae's first game since January 2nd. Had been in uh, COVID protocol yesterday, in fact, was Dijanae's first full-blown practice over the last four weeks. That's Michael McConnell having a conversation with Kim Mulkey. Well, there's looks like there's some blood maybe on the jersey. So Coach Mulkey is going to take this opportunity to have a conversation with the officials. And it looks like Both Jones teams. has some blood on the elbow. So Carrington is actually putting on a, another jersey. She wears number 21. And he's putting on a new one. She is now number 40. I've never seen that happen. This is no. the first time that I've seen someone change jersey numbers. And usually they just wipe the blood off, right, and let you go. That is a much needed three by Scott. Her first Four. points of the second half. How big has she been in the important moments? And then comes back and plays great defense. But another offensive rebound for Baylor. Well, coming out of that break somewhat, good screen by Fierbach to get Scott open. And Smith is late to contest, but you add the blocks that she's had in this game and just some timely buckets. I know she hasn't done a lot of scoring in the second half, but her baskets always tend to be timely. And Bill Finley told me coming into the season that Scott is their most important player. We have to have her on the floor. She is their strength on the inside. She is their toughness. She is really only their true post, their only true post defender. And just does a nice job on both ends of the floor. Oliver hits one out of two. Scott with five blocks, all of them coming in the first half. Ryan absolutely stood up there by Oliver. Well, what Iowa State's been doing the last few possessions is running Ryan into the low block and then having her find a pass. But this time she looks to get the bucket in. Trinity Oliver says, no way. Emily Ryan, the true freshman, there's more blood. It's a hard-fought game. Emily Ryan, true freshman from Claflin, Kansas, and that is the hometown of the incomparable Jackie Stiles. In fact, Emily played for Jackie's dad, Pat Stiles, at Central Plains High School. And only Jackie Stiles and Maury Kane scored more points in the history of Iowa high school girls basketball than Emily Ryan, who's now a point guard. Laughlin did come out to K-State as a homecoming for Emily Ryan. They were in the stands as much as possible. But Emily not having uh, one of her more memorable games, got into foul trouble in the first half. She has not scored, has four assists. But no turnovers. Mm -hmm. And that's important because she had been struggling and turning the ball over. And it's hard to hold on to the ball against Baylor. So got to give the freshman some credit on that. That's Ryan, number 11, and White with the ball in her hands. Again, Iowa State starting three true freshmen all season long. Jones working on Carrington, picked up her dribble. Boy, Barrow's defense continues to be stifling. Feuerbach had nowhere to go but down. Now we have three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Richard saw some daylight, took it and finished. Yeah, the dribble weave offense with the handoff action has been good for Baylor. It's given them some freedom to create. It's giving them some driving lanes. Right here, Richard hands off to Urson. 
who gets it to Carrington and then the turn the corner. See, all it takes is a little hesitation as the defense is trying to, to guard a handoff, which is a very difficult action to get in front of. And as the seas part, good read by Richards to get right to the rim. A timeout, 2.48 left to go. Baylor trying to break a two-game losing skid to Iowa State. The Cyclones coming in 11-5 overall. They are not ranked. Baylor down to number nine after the loss to Iowa State a couple of weeks ago. One thing you said earlier, Pam, rings true right now. When you can hit the three the way Iowa State can, you're never out of a ball game. So this is... I mean, with a lot of time left, this is still very much in play. Yeah, certainly they can score in bunches, but they have really struggled. Whistle before the, the Jones shot. Foul called on Carrington. Ashley Jones, the junior from Iowa City, heading to the free throw line. Actually, it's on Bickle, the official scorer gave the wrong, and then a little, uh, maybe a little follow through. Yeah, they may take a look at that. There is a possibility that that could get upgraded. Saw that you saw Bill Fenley's reaction on the sideline, and now Kim Mulkey getting her views listened to by Michael McConnell, assisted this afternoon by Mai Forsberg, who heads over to the monitor along with Michael and Kevin Pettel, as they will take a look at that foul by Bickle. An eight-point advantage for Baylor. As you mentioned, still time left. Jones has been lethal at the free throw line, hitting all ten of her free throws. And this is a team that can hit threes. They've really struggled, however, in the half-court offense, especially trying to drive on this Baylor defense. We are unsure of what they're looking at at the monitor, but as we go back and look at that, law, that last foul, and I mentioned a possible upgrade, they're looking for excessive or unnecessary contact for an upgrade, but I don't know that that's what they were looking at because unfortunately we are not there and don't have that communication with the officials. And actually the foul shot taken by Scott So the best that I can guess here is that Carrington committed the foul on Scott away from the play before that foul, or before the contact between Bickle and Jones. That's the only thing that makes sense to me being uh, thousands of miles away. There's a steal. Jones stepping back, long three, short. Rebound bounces into the hands of Moon Urson, who has been absolutely everywhere. Her 15th rebound of the game. Well, the only other thing to consider with a three-point shot late in the game is Jones has played 36 minutes, so it's got to be some tired legs to get a three-point shot and, and get your legs up under you. And especially that far away, it was well beyond the second line on the floor. Iowa State going cold here in the fourth quarter. They have hit only three of their last 15 shots, Iowa State, over a 13-minute span. Inside two minutes to go now. Smith. A little bit too strong, but another offensive rebound, and Smith makes him pay. Baylor is plus 16 in second chance points. Nice. 
Now time is definitely not on Iowa State's side. Carrington bottles up Jones again and just has to flail at the bucket. Boy, what a job has Carrington done defensively on Jones. I think Kim Mulkey has found the perfect matchup. But it is not easy to contain Jones with her versatility and all the things she could do on the basketball court. But Dejanay Carrington has been as important on defense as she has on offense. Carrington with 17 points. Again, her first game since January 2nd. And you're going to look at Jones and say, okay, another 25-point game. But she has missed 16 of her 22 shots in large part because Carrington, now wearing jersey number 40 for Baylor, has just been tremendous. There's just two seconds to shoot as Carrington inbounds. Smith off the rim. Rebound taken down by Ryan. Oh, that was a tough rebound by the freshman Ryan. One of the more slight players on the court, but she went after that rebound like a monster. This time three players converge on Jones. That take a lot, a lot of time to develop if you're Iowa State. You got to get as quick of a look at the three as you can. And then a collision at midcourt between Bickle and Jones who were involved in that play we saw earlier that did not result in a foul. This has been a very physical game. And that foul, foul on Ryan, her fourth. Uh, timeout now, you see just six tenths of a second between the two clocks. And Baylor, less than 24 seconds away from going to 12 and two on the season, avenging the loss just a couple of weeks ago in Waco as Bill Fenley has some words for Jones and the rest of the team. You look at the reset. Possession arrow in favor of Baylor, but more than likely just not enough time for this Iowa State team. The fourth quarter, they have been outscored by seven. They've gone cold from the floor, but a lot of it, as we, we keep mentioning, and it bears repeating, this Baylor defense has been just suffocating. Yeah, they put the clamp on, and again, it, there's a very fine line because they've been in some foul trouble and stretches, but I thought that they were willing to take some gambles and knock some balls away. and. Um, just get some tips and deflections at the right moments to take Iowa State out of a rhythm. But getting Nelissa Smith back into the game in the second half after that first half foul trouble definitely helped. They worked through her a lot in the low block on offense. And Iowa State was guarding her one-on-one -on -one in, in many of those situations. And she's one of the best in the country there. And you see the Baylor offense started to open up. But I thought that Smith getting back on the court was probably the most important aspect of Baylor's uh, comeback in this game. Her eighth double-double of the season. She was limited to only five minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. Meanwhile, Iowa State has missed 14 of its last 17 shots to fall into this abyss, down by eight, and now just uh, resulting to fouling. And Emily Ryan goes to the bench. That was her fifth personal foul. Ryan never able to get going, picking up a couple of fouls in just five minutes in the first half. So Emily sits down with no points, four assists. And a learning experience, certainly. Remember, again, this is the only Power Five school in women's basketball that has started three true freshmen the entire season. Donarski, Feuerbach, and Ryan. The future certainly is bright. Kristen Scott's the only senior who starts for Iowa State. Yeah, I really love their freshmen. I mean, they're tenacious. They play with a lot of confidence. And one thing Bill Finley mentioned to us is that they are all really bought into the defensive end of the floor. And not a lot of freshmen come in and thinking about defense first, but they have definitely been dialed in and it's tough. I mean, this is a different Baylor team than when they met a couple of weeks ago with DeJanae Carrington back on the floor, Bickle. Um, and, and I felt like Coach Kim Mulkey did a better job of navigating the foul trouble 
um, in this game as well with her lineups. Dee Dee Richards also left that game in the earlier contest and was not able to play late. So it, it is a different beast. And then Baylor has been one of the best, if not the best, defensive team in the country for years based on the numbers. And they've only al allowed 10 points by Iowa State in this quarter. You take a look at the records, and this is uh, coming into this game. West Virginia is a team that, that a lot of people should uh, keep an eye on. They've, been, uh, they've had some nice wins in the Big 12, and you see Iowa State about to go down in the conference for the third time this season. Remember Baylor, this is a team that has won 10 straight regular season titles just dominating in the Big 12. Yeah, keep your eyes on West Virginia. Mike Carey's team is playing very well behind Kaiser Gondrasic. Um, S. Mary Martinez leads the league in rebounding, but very shocked by Oklahoma State. I believe they were picked eighth in the league and are right up near the top. Natasha Mack is WNBA draft material mm -hmm. and is having an outstanding senior campaign. Another foul on the inbound. Both teams have shot a lot of free throws. Baylor 21 of 25. Iowa State's only missed one of their 22. And there's fewer Bach goes to the line. And you're just talking about a couple of really good Really good players in the Big 12. Texas has one as well. Yeah, Charlie a lot Collier of WNBA and Natasha Scott's Matt. love. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is future WNBA players right here. But when they matched up um, on Wednesday, Natasha Mack got the better of the matchup with Charlie Collier, and I, I'm really high on Mack. She's moving quickly up to the top half of the first round of the draft. Don't be surprised if she's not in the top three or top four picks. And um, future is definitely bright for both of them with WNBA. Uh, Texas has beaten Iowa State twice in this league, and now Baylor gets them 85 to 77. A double-double for Moon Urson, 20 points for Smith. For LaChina Robinson, I'm Pam Ward, the rest of our crew, as we...